those of us who have jobs, careers, um, you're saving money here, right? You're saving a little money here. You're investing a little money here, right? And you're hoping and praying for rates of returns. I hate to break it to you. The reality is if you don't focus on cash flow vehicles right now, okay, this there's an amazing opportunity right now to be focusing on cash flow vehicles while simultaneously getting your house in order, right? What that could mean is figuring out what is God's purpose for this household, for the Rodriguez family, which consists of four members, right? Or five members, however many members are in your household. What is the individual purpose for God's will in each person in this household that I maintain, that I provide? Let's say you're the provider of the house. You're the breadwinner of the house. What is the purpose for each and every one of those souls in that house? And how do we convert that, monetize it into a small business? And that is what Alex is going to help us with this evening is taking all the wonderful things that we've been doing with velocity banking, infinite banking even, or just say velocity banking itself, which is just the personal financial management side of, of how you take care and steward the money that you do make, right? We've got that down where you're either learning it, you're doing well with it, you're getting results, you're knocking down debt, wonderful. Is it possible that at the same time while we're doing velocity banking, could we be putting together a business strategy, a business plan, potentially selling a service, providing a service with, with literally no barrier, no financial barrier to entry? Like we're talking, like Alex said, about a thousand bucks, maybe five thousand, maybe 10,000, not even, right? Like very little dollars focusing on what can I bring out of this body, right? Into the marketplace, right? What can I bring out of me? The, the, the skills, gifts, talents, treasures that I have from within and release it into the marketplace and then get paid abundantly for that service of which then Alex just talked about wealth preservation tools. Once you've got the cash flow vehicle coming in, yes, okay, cool, money's flowing in. Now we can take a portion of that cash and put it in a, a, a retirement account, let's just say, or a tax-free building account, right? Or crypto or stocks or a real estate investment opportunity, right? I think a lot of people got it backwards. You're trying to put money into things outside of yourself and then hoping and praying that the thing will, will provide. Rather, if you went in first, right, inside to produce a thing, that you are gifted in, get paid abundantly for it, steward it properly, pay your debts off, manage your money, build your credit, personal credit, business credit, okay, good, and then put money in these preservation vehicles that give you these yields, these higher yields, these rates of returns, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So bringing it back to you, Alex, that's yeah, what so I got from that. As you were saying, Denzel, yeah, so I wanna to touch on that. So you and I were in Ohio about like two weeks ago, maybe, maybe a little longer. My goodness, it's already been two weeks. June, yeah. June, uh, yeah, June 24th, that's when we were there, to the 26th. Yeah, so maybe even longer, like three weeks ago, almost. Yeah, um, it feels like yesterday. But yeah. what happened in Ohio was Denzel was helping one of um, the attendees, and they were going over financial strategies for like an hour or 45 minutes with this one woman, but nobody spoke about her top line, her income. I mean, that was fixed, like that's never gonna go up. So I told her, what if we just take the marker and add a one next to her income? And that makes everything else easier. Expenses, paying off debt, paying off credit cards. And I think depending on the community, sometimes people don't think that that's possible. Um, but Denzel and I, we don't come from rich, even upper middle class households, not in the least bit. So it's not really about where you come from. It's just about accepting the opportunity, knowing it's out there, especially today. I mean, maybe in the 70s or 60s where there was no internet, I would understand that. But the opportunity is endless today. Where I've been helping clients recently with Amazon, Shopify, even Walmart, online stores selling products on those platforms. And if you think about it, how many people buy something on Amazon every day? On Shopify, on Walmart, literally maybe billions a day, even hundreds of millions a day. So mm -hmm. if you wanna make even 10,000 a month, you're getting like, like a tiny sliver of that entire market and you're making six figures a, a year relatively passive. And that's just one example. You can start a painting company, a cleaning company, 
online or in person, there's endless opportunity, but you have to focus on the game differently as Denzel said. Inflation is really 15, 20%. You've seen your rent or even other expenses probably go up more than 20% since yep. COVID. So realistically, you can't just save for retirement and hope that it's gonna work out by the time you're 65, 70. Um, especially if you're starting this financial game when you're older, like you're 45, 50, 55, you don't have time for the money to compound. So you need to generate more top line income, more top line revenue now, then invest in stocks, real estate later on. Once you're making tens of thousands a month, which is possible um, with a business or multiple businesses. And so um, I agree with you, people need to look at it now, especially with this upcoming recession. It's the best time to start a business. There's no better time than when other people are scared. Other people aren't starting businesses. You could start one for five, 10,000, nothing insane. You don't need a storefront. You don't need to start a restaurant. You don't need hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, mm. Five to 10,000, start one up, low risk, and at least you take the risk and you see what happens. Um, yeah. But I've spoken to people that are 60, 70, even 80, and they wish they would have at least tried, you know, give it six months, give it a year and at least take a swing and see what happens. Um, so I'd make that recommendation, whether it's working with me or just trying it on your own, at least take the risk and try. And I'm pretty positive you're going to be at least happy with the end result, or you're not going to have any regrets. So.